Monday to everybody as soon as I saw backstage Brandon putting on that hat. I was like, of course he would. Uh, <laughs> episode 53, it's great to be back with you guys. I'm still kind of uh, still kind of jet lag, not going to lie. Uh, but it's good to be back. It's good to be back on the, on the episode. I mean, realistically, I could have been on it last week. It just would have been like three in the morning. <laughs> and uh, I was kind of like, you know, as much as I love doing this show, I think I would have to get some sleep. So I would have had to pass out on that one. Uh, but anyways, of course, Brandon, Mr. Celtic is here. Sexiest Celtic fan alive. And uh, here we are, Jaka, back in the mix. Uh, let's let's get into. You guys want good news or bad news to start off uh, this week's episode? Let's go good news. Let's let's start off on a good point. Okay, I'll start off with plug of the week. I'm gonna have to say my plug of the week is our main man Isaac. Uh, Isaac uh, is moving to Orlando tomorrow morning, um, and I just want to shout him out because. Uh, obviously, I, I created Plug Talk Sports in the beginning, and then shortly, like a year after, I met Isaac, and um, Isaac has been just a very influential right hand man to me, and he's uh, our multimedia producer, and you know a lot of this, <laughs> a lot of this stuff that we do couldn't get done, you know, without Isaac. You know, the videos that we got that we put out for MLS and stuff like that couldn't get. Uh, done without Isaac. Sometimes I get stuck in trying to figure stuff, you know, out on, on videos and editing videos and stuff like that. And, and Isaac's always there to, to rescue the day. Uh, it's been one hell of a journey as we work together at FIU Athletics and have built this up in uh, in Plug Talk Sports. And uh, but it's just the beginning. And uh, he'll still be on Plug Talk Sports even though he's breaking up with us. Uh, and Miami will miss him. But uh, he will still be on Plug Talk Sports. Uh, but yeah, it'll be a change of scenery for him uh, starting starting tomorrow. So that's my plug of the week. Just giving uh, Isaac a well due respect shout out. He shouldn't get used to it. This is just one time. So uh, my plug of the week is Isaac. Oh yeah, shout out Isaac, man. I'm super proud of him. We're all proud of him. But I gotta say though, because recently. This just kind of happened. Peru is knocked out from World Cup tension, and the boys yeah. down under made it. I'm not even Australian. I just love the fact that they're back in the World Cup. <laughs> I just love to see an Aussie on the soccer field, man. I'm telling you right now. So that's probably the best thing I've seen today so far in Monday the week. So, you know, all about the Australia team. Jaka? Um... I guess it would just have to be, uh, I guess the Yankees. I guess they just they just keep rolling. I guess. Hold, I don't know. Brandon liked my my tweet. Jose Trevino hitting another walk off to to be the I think it was the the Cubs two one two to one in the thirteenth day. So it was like a crazy game. Yeah, they're really on a roll, man. It's a. Uh... I don't want to say because it's still early. I don't want to say be like, oh, Yankees might be. Yeah, I know. Me neither. <laughs> but, uh, quick but story. Thing. Quick story. I got to tell Brandon this story. Okay. Uh, Janka goes to an FIU game uh, when I was working there. And we decide that after the game, we're going to go to IHOP across the street. Okay. This man, this man was watching the Yankees uh, take on the Astros. I believe it was the ALCS. And this guy, we're at IHOP. He's got the game live on his phone. And I'll never forget this day. This guy, I, I don't know who it was. Someone tied, I think it was like Glaber Torres, tied up the game. And this guy was like, yeah, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Next game, they put in... Um, a Rollis Chapman. Yeah. Reliever. Yeah, yeah. And Jose, I believe it was Jose Altuve, hits a home run, game over, Astros are heading to the World Series. And this guy, is his face was, he's like, I'm leaving. Thanks, guys. It was nice. Hey, I didn't even think he was going to pay the bill. He just got up and paid his part. He just got up and he was like, I'm done. I'm done. I would have walked away. I wouldn't even take my car back home after that. I wouldn't I even take my car back home, man. 
and I live like 0.2 miles away. <laughs> it was the most frust- one of the most frustrating moments of seeing John. Why would you throw a slider to a guy that's closer to the floor than he is to the sky? I don't know. <laughs> oh man, but you know what? You're in a better place now. That's all that matters. Well, and then after the game, and then the next game after that, uh, Aaron Judge is leading the the league with 24 home runs. He hit two home runs the, the game after, so he's on a roll right now. Uh, we're gonna go on to uh, to Bellamy doing the bad news now. Um, Brandon and, and John, you're probably gonna feel for this one. I, I don't think it's a hot take, but uh, Robbie Robinson for Inter Miami has a ruptured hamstring tendon that will have to undergo surgery and he is out for the next five to six months which means practically the rest of the season (sighs) here's my take on this i'm frustrated because robbie has great talent to be a potential threat and we've seen glimpses of that since he's been drafted but he has become such a liability that his body could just never stay healthy he can't have consecutive back-to-back games on the field without being hurt, being taken off the field. And for me, if you're Chris Henderson and Phil Neville, at the end of this season, you must evaluate Robbie Robinson's future with the club. Uh, it's not personal. Obviously, it's it's your body, but like you have to, let I think, decide whether you want to let him go and, and buy a player. Obviously, they're still under sanctions, but... Uh, you know, if you unload Robbie, you get rid of Gonzalo's contract. If he continues to retire after this season, that gives you some good money to at least buy a, a decent player that's not going to be injury prone or just draft another player uh, and, and build him up. But for me, you really got to consider Robbie Robinson's future at, at the end of the season. And that, that's... That's my shameless plug of the week. Is this guy? It's just another injury. It's it's frustrating, but his future's got to be looked at at the end of this season. No, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, before I even go to my uh, shameless, I have to talk about Robbie a little bit. I mean, young kid, and plus I was a season ticket holder right there in his second yeah. year, and it's like, man, I mean, the I mean the potential in him is ridiculous. So you yeah, know, I think he almost made it to the Chilean like national team or something yeah. like that. He should be on the USA team, but obviously, you know, time of the pitch is probably one of the biggest factors, and he just hasn't been there. So, so praying for him. But my shameless, I believe, because I forgot what the event was, but my cousin streamed it for me on Discord. Specifically, it was like this uh, for Xbox Pass or whatever like that, some Bethesda games. And I'm a huge Fallout guy, right? I'm still waiting on Fallout to redeem themselves from Fallout 76. There's a new Elder uh, Scroll game coming out. Nothing for about Fallout. No Fallout teasers, no trailer, no nothing. So, yeah, sure, I get back to 76 and I can even reboot and do Fallout 4 for the fifth time or New Vegas and pay for 100 bucks on PlayStation. But, I mean, I just need Bethesda to do something next year. At least something next year. John, can you have a response to that? I know it looked like, it looked like you had a... For, for, I'm going to say for Robbie Robinson, I'm going to say, this is my mentality. Listen, you got injured, get well soon. But at the, at the same time, you better think the, the next man up is going to try to take your spot. Yo, but this is so, like, don't, time, don't sleep because you're going to get eaten. Because, you know, the, whenever somebody's on the bench, you're hungry for the position. So come back healthy and, you know, don't, don't slack off. But uh, for shameless plug, um, I tweeted about this. I don't know if you guys saw it. I'm just a little bit frustrated because, I, as you guys know, I'm a I'm a Dragon Ball fan. And I don't know if you see it, my my boy Goku. But movie came out in Japan to, uh, on the 16th of June, right? But the movie doesn't come out in America until August. So all so people are taking pictures, taking videos, and posted it on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, everywhere, and ruining the movie. All, all the spoilers that people have been hyping this movie up for, for like three years already. And they're spoiling the movie because they're just pirating the movie and just posting pictures of the ending and shit. Bro, I'm, listen, I, 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 I understand people are hyped about the movie, but don't ruin it for people that haven't seen it and they can't see it because they don't live in Japan. 
No, yeah, watch yourself on Twitter. Watch yourself on Twitter. I've been. Well, I, I, I've been trying to avoid every single social media thing. Don't commit. I am follow Dragon Ball. I follow everything, and then after the movie, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow them again, because I'm losing my patience with these idiots toasting. Oh God. I still probably won't be better than, you know, as much spoilers that you see, it still probably won't be better than Top Gun Maverick. Okay, just imagine you you were ready to watch Top Gun Maverick, all of a sudden everybody spoiled it before you watched it. I'm telling you right now, this may be a hot take. It may change. The opinion might change because there's still some time left in the year. But right now, Top Gun Maverick is film of the year. Right now. I don't know about that one. Like the Sonic movie is still out in theaters. Like I don't know about that one. Man. Sonic, oh, that Sonic is movie good. is above everything. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that every year. Okay, but what movies have come out this year? So Sonic, right? Jurassic Park just recently came out. I haven't seen oh, it yet. That's, no. a, that's a flop. <laughs> they got oh. Dr. Grant back. What do you mean that's a flop? You're you're talking to the guy. Brandon, world is the same thing, okay? Dinosaurs. But they brought back Dr. Grant. They're loose. They're loose. Jurassic Park 3, they brought back the original. Come on. I mean, I haven't even seen it yet. I still believe in Dr. Grant. The reason they brought those those old characters back is because they couldn't make any money making the other ones. That's the whole point. That's why it's good. That's why it's good. (laughs) Brandon, you're talking to the guy that said that Dan Marino is one of the worst Miami athletes. Yeah, I know that, but I mean, I thought we all agreed that Dr. Grant back in a Jurassic Park movie is a guaranteed legacy movie, you know? Wait, did Spider-Man No Way Home come out this year or last year? I think last year, December. It was last year. It doesn't count. Okay, okay. so then... Wait, I mean, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Was No Time to Die this year, 2022? No, Jason I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, but Are I know the Batman movie. Really- I think it was in November, wasn't it? Oh, I cannot forget about Batman either. You can't forget oh, about oh, Batman. Oh, that's right. You can't forget about Batman. See, this is no, a whole discussion in itself. Like, 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 Batman was a little for me. I, mm, I don't know, man. I might have to go with slight edge, Top Gun over Batman. I agree. I haven't even seen the movie. I need to see it after that comment. I needed. What do you want from me? I'm in Northern Florida working. All right. <laughs> it's called one, two, three movies. <laughs> yeah, Brandon. I know. I, I'm telling you right now, Brandon. Like Top Gun, bro. It's it's good. It is really good, and it's better than the first one. Watch it in IMAX too. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you right now, the moment I watch it, I'm doing straight mustache for the next episode. Guaranteed. <laughs> I'm going to have to. I've been seeing it too much on the internet, man. TikTok and everywhere. Uh, guys, let's get into the first topic of the night. Uh, Janka had an article about this. It's it's coming out after the show. Uh, have you heard last, right before this, this weekend, uh, the Marlins had a closed door meeting. Uh, a lot of a lot of people were talking about this closed door meeting over social media. Um, Don Mattingly came out and said there was a lot of uh, pointing at each other. There was a lot of complaining at each other. Guys calling guys out. Um, there was people talking about other players complaining about about Jazz Chisholm and his personality. Uh, whatever transpired in this meeting, because we got minimal details of what happened in this meeting, but whatever happened in this meeting kind of woke them up a little bit because they really poured in the runs on a Houston Astros team that is in first place of their division. Yes, they lost on Sunday, they lost yesterday, but Friday and Saturday, they really poured in the runs against the Astros and let alone, I believe it was the first game on Friday or second game on Saturday, the Jazz Chisholm hit two home runs against the Astros. Um, I'm not saying that, oh, this is a huge turning point in the season, but whatever happened in that meeting definitely woke them up some bit. It woke Jazz Chisholm up some bit as well. Uh, They're playing against the Phillies right now as, as we speak. Uh, hopefully they can, this meeting, whatever it is, I mean, they're sitting third in the NL East, uh, can get them to make some sort of run. I mean, the only team that the Marlins have seemed to be 
comfortable and beating consecutively is the Washington Nationals, and that's because they're playing so poorly this year. Uh, but other than that, it's been kind of a slopey season. I mean, the beginning of the year was kind of okay. Kind of it's just the Marlins thing. You know, the Marlins always start hot, and then you get to the middle of the season, and then it's the dream is over. But this closed-door meeting, it really did something to this team. Oh, yeah. I mean, not even that. I was at the game against San Fran where they let go. I think it was like, you know, a grand slam in the fourth inning or something like that. And the game afterwards, they did the meeting. Yeah. Just the fan base and the attention to that meeting probably woke up people that don't even follow the Marlins regularly in Miami. You know? Yeah. I mean, five five straight wins. They lose that game on Sunday against the Astros. But still, five straight wins with a young team. Jazz Chisholm, obviously, prob- hopefully makes the all-star uh, selection. Yeah. But, I mean, the Marlins are on a roll right now. I mean, the Finns are swimming up. And this might be perfect because during, you know, the off months of, let's say, July, August, and all that stuff, I mean, the Marlins might take advantage of that right now, especially in the National League. I mean, who knows? We might even see another... You know, hopefully they slide up enough for a World Series, Marlins, Yankees type of scenario. Who knows? I might be too, I might be, you know, spitting my mouth right now. (laughs) But I'm just saying the Marlins, again, you know, in the past three years, you haven't seen progress from them, even despite Jeter being probably the worst team in ownership. (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm just saying they made the playoffs not too long ago. They can do it again this year to keep it up. So the meeting might be the energy shifting. All right, all right. Well, listen. I think the Marlins, that five win win streak really helped them out, especially those two against the Astros, because yeah. it put them two games behind the Phillies. They're playing the Phillies a three game series right now with the Phillies. So let's say the Marlins win the, this this series, they sweep them, right? They take third. And depending on how Atlanta goes. Uh, I don't know. It could be like maybe four and a half games. Well, Atlanta's playing the Nationals, so yeah. But uh, let's, yeah. Let, let, let's just hope that Atlanta Atlanta loses with one or two, whatever. Okay, I got here. I did some homework before on a napkin. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So for the rest of the first half of the season, right now, from June thirteenth to July seventeenth, the Marlins play the Mets eleven times. I know. And eight of those are at New York. So it's gonna, that's going to be tough to take first. It's gonna, let's be honest here. It's going to be tough to take first. Yeah. But the second half, the Marlins are going to have – this is where we're going we're to find out the Marlins really have the, the cojones. Because the second half, they play the Mets eight more times, but this time it's six of them at home. And they play the Phillies nine more times, six at Philly – they play Atlanta 10 more times, seven of those at home. Wow, you really calculated this out. Yeah, I know. But the, the one the one thing that's really like hitting me in the face for the Marlins right now is that they, they play the Dodgers, above 500 team, seven times. They play the Padres three times. They play the, the Brewers four times and the Rays twice. That's 16 games. That's 16 most likely L's. <laughs> so that's not yeah. really helping. But, I mean, but I all it takes they... is to win the division. So if we can just beat the Phillies, take those wins against the Phillies and take those wins against Atlanta, those Mexicans are gonna really are really gonna hit us, but whatever. I hear a lot. I, 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 I can, I can see right? the moments. I can but, see the moments right now that us, no lie, making a wild card spot. I can see it. I can see it. it that's but what I'm saying. It's possible. They need to maintain this this correo. Not this, like, at the beginning of the season, they won seven in a row and then proceed to lose the next 11 out of 12. I don't want to see that. Can't have okay. it. The, the, the real question, Janka, is for you. If the Marlins were to win a World Series, would you go, Would you be out on the street celebrating? Hell yeah. The hell Even if they get these even what? Even as a Yankees fan? Of course. <laughs> I pay taxes too. <laughs> you don't think I suffer? <laughs> I rather have I rather have the Hurricanes play in that stadium than the Marlins win. But if the Marlins win, I'll win. 
99 year yeah. contract for what? To lose? Might as well go just win. Go out the 49th Street and go out the little event, get the pots and pans ready, man. You get the pots no, and pans ready. Until, until, until the next morning. Dun, 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 dun. Give me a ticket if you need to. True story, actually, I was obviously we were we were s small, but in 2003, I vi vividly remember when the Marlins won. <laughs> My mom honked the horn so much that she lost the horn of the car. <laughs> <laughs> because the Marlins beat the Yankees and no one thought it was possible. I remember my grandfather held me out of the sunroof and the cops were like all around. I was like, oi, el niño no puede afuera. And then I was just like, ah. <laughs> Hey, Miami, when they're winning championships is the best city in the world, though. Best city in the world. Right. No, Unless it's Boston, but you know. Yeah, you know. We wanted to do pots and pans this year, but Brandon had other plans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a long ride. You guys have been having it good for too long. Brandon's lost in Brujeria. Yeah, yeah. That's why he went to North Florida. He's, he got he got excommunicated from South Florida. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least I'm not a Jaguars fan, though. I didn't convert all the way. Um, <sighs> is it no, worth to be a Jaguars fan or to be a Cowboys fan? Cowboy fan. Because at least all the Jaguars are bad. Yeah, I mean, at least the Cowboys make the playoffs, you know what I mean? But they lose, so. They have to bring it up, but, like, you know, still there, <laughs> you know. You know, they at least got a future. They got something. So. I appreciate your kindness, Brandon. It's very much appreciated around here. You know, some people don't give me that sort of respect, you know? It's called realism. It's called bandwagons, what you are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Freaking Patriots, man. Hey, I was thinking you. How did Cam Newton work out? How, how did Cam Newton work out for you? I, well, I didn't like him in the first place. Whatever. Anyway, he's a piece of crap. Back to the Marlins. Back to the Marlins. I think there's still time. Obviously, we haven't reached the midpoint of the season yet. Really? Uh, I think the most important part, I mean, it would be great to start for the Marlins to start turning things around now. But I think the most important part is the second half of the season. I think that's for any team, really, in any sport. That second half of the season, you start getting hot, you head to the playoffs hot. That's the most important part. Uh, you know, and, and this, first of all, I'm not a fan of the 162 games because why is it necessary to play the same team like 16 times within a month? It's, it's useless. Um, but if the Marlins are going to do it, I, I do think they have the talent to do it. Um, this is a fact and researched that attendance at Lone Depot has risen after Derek Jeter left. After Jeter left, people started showing up to games. Um, so people are going, people are enjoying it. This team has a talent. People are excited to see this team. Um, there's players that people are excited about going to see. Um, it's a different ownership, so hopefully they don't sell them all <laughs> after one good after a good season. Uh, okay, okay, here we go. We've got to know. We're when gonna make. Peter left. I gotta put the hat on. That's what I can represent. So we're gonna make this. We're gonna make this a thing now. We're gonna have Brandon be like a guy from College Game Day, put on a different mascot hat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before you know, we should do that coming up. We should do that. That'll be an idea. I like that. I like that. I like that idea. But yeah, Marlins. I, I definitely do think they can figure it out. I think that uh, you know. We've seen teams before that have these meetings, and then the season gets turned around off of after that meeting. Um, I think now's the start. You know, they took two in Houston against a good Houston team, and if they, like Janka said, if they can get wins against, you know, Philadelphia, I think the most important uh, wins that they have to get is in, against teams in the NL East and their division against their rivals. I think that's how they're really going to get somewhere. Uh, but I think. I'm going to have to agree with Junk. I think wild card is what they should be after. Uh, and it, it could be a possibility. There's still a lot of baseball to be played. Um, the After the series with the Phillies, they play the Mets. Off, four, go four-game series against the Mets at Mets. So I, I, I need to see at least a, a, a tie or win the series. 
because that would really put us in a, in a good position to to get past second and then at least maybe get close to overtake first. No, oh, yeah. I mean, not even that. Even a win against the Mets would probably put us on national TV. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. I mean, just the idea, because I mean, I'm not saying this is the 1986 Mets, but this Mets team, I mean, in reality, both New York teams this year are the real deal. Yeah. So even a win against them will probably put you on prime time and everybody looking at you. So the Marlins, if they keep on winning, people are going to get attention. So It'd be interesting to see a Mets-Yankees World Series, Subway Series. That would be pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. That'd be insane. Bro. And it'd be like, oh, well, it's a travel day. I'm only going to go a couple miles down the bridge. I'm taking a loan out of the bank and paying for a ticket to the World Series. Okay, if you say so, man. I mean, you did it. Where the, the, uh, the stadium, so. Well, the new one now, not the old one. Well, we're going to stay on the topic of baseball. Um, and this is, again, a, a, another social issue that has arise in sports. Um, and it was a big topic throughout the week. Um, several players of the Tampa Bay Rays refused to wear the, uh, obviously June is Pride Month. Uh, they refused to wear the Pride patch, celebrating Pride Month on their jersey. And they said that they weren't going to do it because of their religious beliefs and religious reasons. Um, but a lot of these players and the organization itself got attacked by other MLB players for not doing it. Where do you guys stand on this? I know this is a, it's a touchy subject, touchy issue, but where do you stand on, you know, some of these players saying, Hey, look, I just, I don't believe in it. I don't want to do it. And then, you know, people giving them obviously crap about it. No, yeah. I mean, for one thing, especially for the players, you know, starting with them, I mean, the idea that they ended up becoming vocal with it instead of just, you know, going with it or, you know, making a fuss about it or being secretive about it, you know, at the end of the day, you have to give some sort of respect to the players who went up to stand up for the religion and their beliefs. But at the same time, you know, in general, Pride Month itself is to celebrate LGBTQ community and above anything else, just overall the community itself and how far they've come into enterprises corporations lifestyles community abroad and just overall how life itself with the lgbtq has you know progressed throughout you know it's kind of that type of month where we take pride into that but for the players themselves in, in a sense of a corporate type of feel about it and some of the other people out there that are talking about you know having the raise done anything about it as a corporation I mean, you know, that's just going to be a hit that the Rays as a franchise are going to have to take because in reality, you know, for baseball itself, it should be a player driven thing. And I believe that it is right now for the Rays, at least a player driven league and franchise. So, you know, for either that it is corporate or whatever it is for Tampa that the players go through, I mean, they have to communicate on that and at least figure out something else to at least celebrate Pride Month. I mean, of course, if they don't wear the patches, they can at least do something else, either that be, you know, Pride Night or, or at least some sort of fundraiser for the community of LGBTQ, but at least some sort of other narrative instead of just, you know, excusing it for the entire month, like saying, oh, we're not going to use the patches, we're not going to do nothing with it. You know, at least as an organization, and at least for the players, and I can only assume, of course, that everybody on that roster is with the entire uh, idea of Pride Month, that they at least find something else to do something for it. So the patches themselves, again, you know, it's up to the players, but at the end of the day, that doesn't mean that they're excused if they don't want to or they do want to. Yeah. It's tough to, to about this. It's a touchy ass subject. Uh, I understand from both sides. I mean, yes, if you're, if you're religious beliefs and you don't believe in that sort of thing, the, the gay marriage or or if a man shouldn't be with a man or girl girl whatever it is LGBTQ it's like they think if oh if I wear this I'm enforcing or I'm like I'm behind this but even though that's not why I believe and if and if we're just gonna be and if they're just gonna be forced to do what they don't want to do then what's the then how does like that doesn't really represent history because of all these people that make historical events they went against what they what they were told to do. 
but at the same time, uh, gays weren't really like represented until you know, till now in modern times, where we're a little bit more lenient with the with how everything is. Like everybody's more open to it, but I feel like if, if certain players don't want to wear it, then I guess they just don't wear it. But if people, or if they're, the players is okay with it, then I guess just let them represent. Not not every player should just have just wear if they don't want to. It's just it's kind of like I don't know. It's just fans gonna they're trying to control you on what on what you're like what you want to say because it's like okay if I let's say if I don't want to wear black, then you should you can't force me to wear black or else I'm not gonna play. I'm like, but but like I was like oh I'm I'm a Chicago White Sox, so the uniform is black. So it's like it's kind of like kind of that kind of thing, but yeah, I don't want to I don't, I don't want to get too touchy on it. So it's like uh, I, I agree with Brandon. Actually, um, I think that they should incorporate. I think they should go with all sports. They should incorporate, or these organizations or the league in general should incorporate a way to celebrate these things without having to force in this term the players which are their employees force their employees to celebrate it if they don't believe in it my personal opinion on this subject and on this situation with the rays is we live in the united states of america where people around the world envy wanting to come to this country because we have the freedom to have our own ideas and opinions and to say whatever we want. And these people might be coming from a country where they're silenced or oppressed and they want to have that American freedom or American dream. But nowadays, in our society, it feels more like that light of the American dream, the values of having, I mean, look, you can, in this country, you have the freedom. If you wanna get a gun and kill yourself or you wanna be an idiot, you can. You have that freedom. But I think more in our society, it's becoming to the point where that American value is glimmering because if you're not with an overall majority of an opinion and you have your own opinion that's not with that opinion, then you're wrong and everyone goes against you and then you might end up losing your whole entire career or life. And that just makes me think what happened to, you know, that, that value that makes the nation so great. I mean, I believe that we're all entitled to an opinion. I mean, Brandon might have an opinion that I think is absolutely wild. And the same thing with Janko. Or I'm, he may have an opinion that I, I think is absolutely wild. But at the end of the day, that's his opinion. I have my opinion. And we respect each other. And that's the way it goes. I mean, that's the freedom we have in this country. But just because Brandon thinks that way doesn't mean that I have to force upon him the way that I think and say that his opinion is invalidated because I think my opinion is right. So I think in, in the Rays situation, if there's players that do not believe in that, and I think a lot of people misunderstand that they think that just because they don't believe in that or they don't represent that means that they hate that community, which I don't think that's right. Or I think that's the correct opinion. I think that they don't, hate the you know they just don't support it it doesn't mean that they hate the people they just don't believe in that and it's okay to say okay that person has a different opinion than i do or a different belief than i do we shouldn't force it upon you know the players and the team that for having different different beliefs so back to brad i come back to brandon's point where i think that organizations and leagues should create a way where they can celebrate these things without forcing the idea upon their employees. 
Yeah, I know that that makes sense. I know it was a long. I was trying to put it all together, but yeah. no, but it was good though. It was good. It was yeah. good to get the message across though. But I mean, again, just to, you know, just close it off and everything. Yeah. You know, at the end, at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure we can all agree that you know that the Rays players, again, as you know, Daniel said, the employees of this organization, that you know, even though they don't want to do a specific thing for it, if that be a brand of clothing or whatnot, that but at the end of the day, you know. That doesn't mean that the organization is excused to figure out another way if they really do want to keep on going for this month of Pride Month. So at the end of the day, we, we respect the players, but at, also we understand how huge Pride Month is to not only the United States, but also to the nation and probably baseball for some of those people out there. Yeah. What, were, were the Rays fined in any way or no? Or they were just told something? Uh, they, they, they were not fined or they were not told anything. It just created a whole media spectacle of everyone uh, coming okay. in on this and other yeah. players in the league chiming on as well. And uh, I forgot who the player was, but I saw another player on another team saying they were hypocrites for, for and that's what I'm talking about. You know, just because these players didn't have this share the same opinion he did, he went out on social media and called them hypocrites, which I don't think it's correct. But it is what it is, and um, we're gonna end that there with that topic. It's very, very good points by 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 Brandon and and Janka uh, on that topic. But uh, there's one whole thing here that's happening with golf that's had golfers all fighting against each other in the past week. And usually people are like, golf is such a calm, nice sport, which it is. But for the first time, we see an uprising in golf here, and golfers going at each other. Uh, and this is this new organization from Saudi Arabia called LIV Golf. Uh, now, my favorite golfer, uh, Phil Mickelson, um, has withdrawn from PGA and has gone to LIV Golf. And we see now a couple of golfers take after his lead and, and make the switch. And we saw media members as well. Uh, that went to an LIV golf uh, invitation, I believe, was in London this past weekend. And they were saying, wow, the, me the media members, not even the golfers, the media members, they're like, wow, the treatment at this at this uh, place was unbelievable. They had robotic carts serving drinks in the media tent. And they're like, PGA would never. Uh, and But then you have people still on the other side, they're like, oh, PGA, like if you leave the PGA, you're a traitor and going to LIV, you're a traitor and you're just going out after the money and you're in a, you know, going, giving money to a foreign country like Saudi Arabia, obviously, you know, United States, and Saudi Arabia has had tensions in the past. And, uh, look, my take on it is like, if you want to go play golf somewhere else, go do it. I mean, What's the big deal? You, you, you know, Phil Mickelson, yeah, he's, he's won a lot of things in the PGA, but he's a man that's, you know, probably towards the latter end of his career. And he just doesn't want the pressure of the PGA and wants to have fun in, in an organization like LIV. And you should have the freedom to go play wherever you want. I mean, I don't see anybody complaining about basketball players that go play in China. I mean, they're like, all right, cool. Look, he's playing overseas. I don't see anyone complaining about that. So I, I don't see – this is probably, you know, for golf, this is like the first adversity they've ever had. They're like, oh, my God, there's another league. Oh. Like, it's, it's, it's like Satan's coming to the earth. Uh, but, like, I don't see a big deal with it. I don't know why everyone's making a big deal about it. Um, well, I mean, it, I mean it's, it's a change of the times, though. It's a change of the times. Yeah. You know, I mean, for those people that know me, you know, I'm the uh, golf beat writer for the Alligator, which is the independent yeah. in Gainesville. So yeah. I was able to actually look more into it because now my timeline is more golf. And yeah. I remember seeing Jim Nance, who usually covers uh, yes. for PGA, it's he was talking about, you know, a lot of these golfers like uh, Nicholson, who basically come from PGA and they build their careers, they build their families, and just in general, their brand is built through the PGA tours. And now they're going to live and reality live i mean at the end of the day if you're going to tell me 120 something million to play a golf tournament i'm gonna take it i don't even care who's my caddy i don't even care what the iron clubs i'm gonna take it you know what i mean how rough the 18 hole is i'm gonna take it so 
And reality is just, you know, competition of the leagues. If PGA wants to keep their players, pay them. Pay them the same amount. Give them the same leverage that you're seeing that Liv is giving out from, of course, a lot of the uh, Saudi Arabia elites and some other people that are, you know, investing in this Liv tournament stuff. I mean, go ahead and match it. If somebody really enjoys and loves the PGA Tour as much as any other golfer out there, they would go out there and bleed out that money because it's going to be a real battle. It's going to be competition. Not going to say it's something like a Wild West of golf era, but, I mean, go out there and compete. It's a, it's a whole capitalistic idea right now, the golf PGA, because this is the first time PGA has even been challenged. So it's going to be real interesting. Well, that's the thing, Brandon. I think that's why people in the PGA are a little salty is because Liv is being able to provide golfers with one, resources that the PGA has never given them, money that the PGA has never even thought of giving them. Right. And they're like, okay, cool. All right. I'm getting stuff that I've never gotten before. I'm getting more money. Like, that's a better gig, better deal. Might as well do it. So exactly. if PGA wants to compete with that, they're going to have to up their stakes, up their end, give them more resources that, that Liv is giving them and pay them more money. If they don't want to, then they're going to go down the drain slowly and slowly as more golfers start going to live. So that's just the reality of the fact. There's nothing more to it. Oh, exactly. I mean, and also the way you put a basketball analogy to it, because recently I know that Michael Beasley so yes. like a seven-figure deal for the team in China. If he yeah. went back to the NBA, he probably wouldn't even get more than a million, probably a couple K, <laughs> probably yeah. a couple K. So, I mean, I mean, think of it like that. I mean, Raul, you're going to choose money or you're going to choose tradition? I mean, it's just, before Janka goes, I mean, Brad, it's the same thing with soccer. I mean, yeah, like the Real Madrid's, Man United, Man Cities of the world, but if you're not good enough to make those teams, like, there's always teams in Saudi Arabia, there's teams in China, there's teams in Japan that, yeah, nobody follows except in those countries, but they will throw bucket loads of money at you. So it's it's almost the same concept. Janka? Okay. This is the first time I've ever heard of L-I-V, L-I-V-E, live, whatever you call it, golf. Now, what I want to know is, is there a difference in between the PGA and an LIV? Is it like, or like, is like the atmosphere different where like the, anybody can go watch the game or is it like, what is it like, is it, what's the difference? Because I want, there has to be a reason that he moved. Besides well, I mean, money maybe. In, in reality, it's still 18 holes, right? Yeah. Still a whole tournament, everything. Yeah. However, better pay, right? Yeah. Obviously better, you know, uh, a nominees, or you want to call it, I forgot the word for it. Came yeah, there we go, that one. Yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, it just specifically, the players themselves are just treated better. It's still a public event for everybody to see. It's just the players are treated better. Do you think that the golf? I, do you, uh, I mean, Chase is hot. I'm gonna say this. Do you think golfers now, modern golfers, besides the old age, are now they want to see a more modern style? or a modern way of how golf is watched. You like, know what? Before Brandon answers that one, I think so, yes. Because I think I think players like a Phil Mickelson or a Tiger Woods grew up in that era of golf that it was all about, you know. The class. The, the class and like the, the gentleman side of the sport. I think in modern day, I think the younger golfers are like, all right, how many endorsements can I get and how much money I can get by winning? Not more about the, the beauty and gentleman and class aspect of it. It's kind of like like the Happy Gilmore situation, how he came into the PGA and he was like so different from everybody else that so many new sponsors and new companies wanted to to sponsor golf tournaments so i just feel like that's what new players are wanting to see like instead of having own an invite only to the masters why don't you let let people normal people walk in and watch them play and maybe you'll get more revenue maybe more people will watch more kids will want to play more money for you 
Hey, but kids, kids are gonna think. You know what kids are gonna think about now? I mean, kids that are playing golf, let's say in high school and get to the college level, and they're about to graduate college. They're probably gonna be like, all right, am I gonna go to the PGA, which has been like the only thing that we've been taught and it's historic and whatnot, or I'm gonna go to live that's gonna pay me a bucket load of money and gonna give me new amenities and stuff like that. Um, like, like, okay, yeah, go right in. No, oh, yeah, I mean, to, to, just to chime in probably the last bit of it, specifically like, you know, like the next generation, right, of golfers out there. I mean, right now we're probably seeing more golf on bar stool than we are on the golf channel. You know what I mean? So a lot of people getting innovative on things, you know, they're all out there on the green college and whatnot. But I think the biggest thing is though, especially I believe, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Liv is trying to also do a template where it could be teams. So yes. two together, cool. two hall of famer guys, right? Yes. That in itself, is what's going to attract attention that in itself is what's going to bring people to the tv bring people to the green the rough whatever you want to call it so in reality again as i said before i mean i bring it all in together pga they just have to respond that's all it is to it they just have to respond they can't whine about it i i saw that brandon because i saw i saw a tweet talking about that where they're like Do you imagine the pair of phil mickelson and tiger woods together <laughs> at the golf and i was just like yeah, like, I know. They would not lose. I'm sorry. They would not lose. Yeah, and, and honestly, who would have thought that all this stuff started with Brett Favre and Tom Brady having a little bit of a competition with uh, legendary golfers? Who would have thought? Like, wouldn't it be cool, though? Like, if, okay, let's say the NCAA, not, I hate them, but, you know, they, they come in with golf, right? And they would have the top golfers in the country for college, right? And then the top 10 will be eligible for let's say a championship PGA for college. And then I guess the winner or the top three will go on to be invited to, to play in the PGA tour or something I mean, like that. It would be so, it would be something so cool. I mean, it would be cool, but there, there are some that, you know, some people at the collegiate level who are already doing the U S open and all these different tournaments, yeah. but PGA itself, I would like, I like an idea where like you get the 10 best out of college and then you have them go up against another 10 best out of the PGA and have that bracket. I don't even care if it's a landslide. It'll just be an interesting one to watch. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I think the fi final take on this subject is that the PGA needs to figure out something, not only to respond, but to freshen up their side of things and keep people engaged and interested in watching the PGA. Um, the next topic's gonna be very interesting. Uh, I saw it this morning, and it's been rumored since probably since the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, but Donovan Mitchell was hanging out last night in Miami with Jimmy Butler. People have been saying that Donovan Mitchell has interest, might have interest in joining the Miami Heat. Uh, there was something I saw today that actually was very funny as well. This it was. Donovan Mitchell announces he wants to go to the Heat, and it was you know Utah Jazz sending out Dwayne Wade and handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think about Donovan Mitchell considering the Miami Heat? I mean, for people that follow us on this panel, like personally, I don't really believe that Donovan Mitchell on the Heat is a right fit. Yeah. But hey, you know, Jimmy Butler night out with Donovan Mitchell in the same restaurant a few years ago that D Wade was with Jimmy Butler. Yeah. And this was when Jimmy was in as a 76er. So again, kind of the same thing you marinate right now in the trade talks, you know, summer's coming up, July 1st coming up to, you know, change up the wheels for the next season. In reality, I mean, it's not about is it going to happen? It's about when it's going to happen at this point. Because I've never seen, and obviously, you know, besides Pat Riley saying, you know, he under the mat to LeBron, I haven't seen a Miami Heat team as from front office to player associate with a player like Donovan Mitchell has, right? D Wade in the front office of Utah, Jimmy Butler going out with him on nights, right? I mean, not even that. I'm pretty sure Donovan Mitchell and Bam in a while even had a workout earlier yeah. this month. They so did. in reality, it's like, you know, Mitchell doesn't want to work out with the guys in Utah. He doesn't want to resolve things with Rudy Gobert. Quinn Snyder, again, one of the most winningest coach in Utah franchise's history, 
left, it's going to be a rebuild in Utah. And I don't know if Jonathan wants to stick for that. So in reality, they're, they're marinating the idea. You know, it's going to come to fruition, I'm pretty sure. Because obviously, you're not going to get Bradley Beal. You know, you're not going to go out and get these other guys. As I said before, Damian Lillard might be a possibility. But Donovan Mitchell, I mean, there's no doubt about it. He wants to be in Miami. And if you want Joel Embiid, you're going to have to wait another year for that. But no, yeah. before, before Junker responds to this one, because I know he's got his own already taken strong opinion on Donovan Mitchell. First of all, my opinion on that <laughs> is that it's not exactly who I want, but Jimmy needs help and he needs another scorer. And if Donovan Mitchell, which we know he can score, brings that help, I think it does bring Jimmy Butler some some ease to, to kind of relax and not have to go for 50 every night. Uh, my second thing would be on LeBron's show, Uninterrupted, he did say that if there was a team that he felt he could help win a championship because he would be the missing piece, he said that that would be the Miami Heat. What do you make of that? Me or, or Brendan? Either one of you guys. What do you make of that? You can go. All right. Yeah, I, I got a whole paragraph Answer for it, so. with Daniel. <laughs> Answer what Daniel just asked. Listen, Daniel knows how I feel when he left. He knows how I feel. I kind of felt like he left us high and dry. But he would fit in. He would fit in. <laughs> because I kind of low key, low key. His movies aren't really like. I even though I just saw the movie coming out on Netflix. It's really good, by the way. Hustle? Oh, yeah. Hustle? Love it. Loved it. It was amazing. But the Space Jam didn't hit. The Space Jam was in it, boy. And I think he's kind of tired of all the taxes and all that and all that crap that's going on in California, bro. Low, low key, I think you can see him getting a little ticked off. Hey, come down here with no, no steady income taxes. You're in South Beach every single day you wake up. You you don't have to deal with any BS. Oh yeah, I'm telling you, bro. That's it. That forget about messing with the team. That's the reason. <laughs> No, oh, yeah. $15 well, gas. No, it, it's it's too wild out there. If you're not staying in Florida, where are you staying at, you know? But, yeah. look, the reality with LeBron James, because especially you know, even bringing it back when he joined the Lakers, when he was talking about, oh, I want the best place for my family, I thought he was going back to Miami, to be honest, because that's where his kids grew up, right? But, yeah. you know, went to Los Angeles, he's doing whatever he had to do there, or he got a championship or another ring. Look, if he goes back to Miami, he will definitely fit into the heat culture, as they say. But more importantly, the idea of LeBron can play the four with Bam and Abayo moving to the five. A Bam and Abayo, LeBron James in the future of Miami, if that does happen, that's dangerous. Bam and Abayo will elevate his game offensively, knowing that LeBron is right there next to him, moving things around. Either he goes all around the wing, Bam does the pick and roll, whatever LeBron is allowed to aggression. That's an ideal move right there if Pat Riley wants to take that, if LeBron's available, of course. Because you're not going to get a trade for him. I don't think Los Angeles would even consider getting rid of him. But LeBron James back in Miami, I think it's far-fetched. But at the same time, he might retire with the Heat. He just might retire with the Heat. And I know it could go back to Cleveland, but reality is like, Man, LeBron's going to be playing until he's 45. If you're going to be playing your last year, might as well play with a chance to win it all. So you're not going to go back to Cleveland, I'll tell you that. So Miami LeBron is a real thing. It's a real thing. Okay. Hey, you, you, I always smile because you're teasing me too much. <laughs> <laughs> you're teasing, you're just teasing. saying it's a real thing. No. I don't want to. I don't want to tease also, Daniel. Yeah, I don't want to court sales, man. Okay. 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 Think about this for a second, right? We wait a year, right? We get him B. Let's say B wants to come over here, right? Okay, we get him B. I feel like we're planning to rob a bank here. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. listen, but listen, 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 listen. This next year, we, we don't get Donovan Mitchell. Hopefully we don't get him. I don't want him. That's my take on him. I don't want him. Because that's, that's just another small player. I want defense, bro. Like, who, like we're, obviously, the next couple of years, we're going to be playing – Jason Tatum. You got Duncan Robinson. <laughs> well, we're going to be playing Jason Tatum. We're going to be playing Giannis. We're going to be playing all these big people. I'm tired of playing small, bro. 
That's the only reason we lost against the Lakers in 2020. Stop picking up small players. Second, I want I want the Heat to pick up Levine. He played with Jimmy Butler in Chicago. In Chicago. That'd be a, that's a chemistry one, two, three right there. And B, he's already teased that he he's already liking what he's seen from Miami. Ah, uh, yeah, Jimmy Levine and then B. Tremendo trade ahorita, right there. Now imagine LeBron, since he says he says he wants to take a small role. He doesn't want to go and play and be the star player, right? If I can't right, I think they're gonna, I think they have to go take out loans from the U.S. No, government. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. But would you say LeBron? But would you say LeBron? That's a good one. But would you say LeBron doesn't want to be the head, the headpiece of a team anymore? He's tired of playing the leader. He just wants to like have a, a, a role in the team, not not just like a regular player, right? Would you say that? So you mean well, you got? Well, most likely he's gonna go join the Heat because he can't be oh, moving around okay. Pat Riley. Well, if he's in a, if he's already on his last legs, right, and he's gonna retire in the Heat, he'll take a pay cut. And with that, and with that pay cut, we still have money left over, and we can pick up somebody else. So it'll be Jimmy, LeBron, Levine, and B, because you can work that out. If LeBron takes a pay cut, because LeBron always wants to be the highest player. But if you want to be the guy that just wants to be in a minimal role and not do that much work, you can't pay you the amount you want. And then guess we'll include in some other player off the bench. Bro, yeah. stacked. It is stacked. It's workable. It's workable, bro. I'm telling you. I don't, bro, because the thing is, though, especially with Miami East situation, the bench will be gutted. Yeah, that's probably the biggest thing. Because you guys could get a feed, but Bam will be gone. Tyler Hero will most likely be gone. And Levine himself, and Chicago's going to go with, I mean, they're going to put a limb out there to get, bring him back because that the Rosen Levine thing that was going on in the middle of February, January, I mean, that's a magic moment Chicago needs going into the playoffs next year. So I think Levine wants to leave Chicago, to be honest. But To be honest, I think the only person that's going to be leaving that situation most likely be Lonzo Ball. I think he's already halfway out the yeah. door. I think he's going to play with his brother. Ooh. That Charlotte team with a new coach. Jackson, I mean, it. That, I'll be a dangerous team. I've seen his brother play together. They play pretty well together. I don't lie. Guys. Well, yeah, I mean, not even that. The chemistry's there, but in reality, it's like, man, if that even roster does happen, LeBron will probably have to say, "Hey, Jr., get off the golf field. Let's go out there on the court." You know, and like call up. I mean, who knows? I mean, Richard, hell, Jefferson. Richard Jefferson might be off ESPN by then. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, it'll be possible. You just gotta question yourself: How many minutes are they gonna play as a starting five? Listen, so. I would like LeBron James if he if he promises just to be a role player, not not the guy that we saw when you know when the in the heydays, you know the the Miami Heat days. No, but no. I don't want him coming over to the to, to the Heat and and pulling the same BS he did before, where he just picks and chooses who he wants on the team, and then the moment he leaves, he leaves us high and dry with a bunch of role players that can't do shit. Oh, yeah. He well, doesn't yeah. every single team. He yeah, left, he left it, it, it's a LeBron no effect. Play. He comes to the Heat, plays, leaves with just role players. And then he goes to the Cavs, he leaves the Cavs, high and dry, the Cavs don't do anything for the next five years. Oh, and look at that now. Watch, the Lakers are in turmoil. He's going to not do anything this next year. He's going to leave high and dry. The Lakers are losers again. <laughs> and then watch, and then he goes to another team where they're highly stacked that he's going to lose again. I'm telling you again and again, it's the system of LeBron. He controls the narrative. I know. And the worst part about it, I mean, you look at Kuzma, Alonzo Ball, and Brandon Ingram in New Orleans. All about I mean, The Lakers are screwed for the next 10 years of LeBron leaves, guaranteed. But the difference is for Miami, though, is like, even if LeBron joins here, like, what draft picks will you guys trade away? You know what I mean? He's unrestricted, though. Since he's just by himself, he can just choose where he wants to go. We wouldn't have to get rid of a, a, a picks. No, I know that, but I'm just saying if LeBron went to Miami and started, you know, playing GM LeBron, you know, oh, yeah, I don't want he doesn't to have a lot of draft picks to work with, let alone, I mean, Pat Riley's not going to mess around with that. Guaranteed. Yeah, Final. I don't think Final. I'm ready to that. Final thing here, guys, before we go. We got game five here in, in about 30 minutes. I need predictions. Here we go, here we go, the hat. Here we go. 
There we go. Let's get the hat. Get the hat going. There it is. There it is. The Celtics fan alive right there. Brandon Hernandez. There we go. I need honest opinions, unbiased, Brandon. Unbiased. Well, the ending is going to sound like it, but I'm going to explain myself. Celtics uh, Warriors, game five, who wins? Right now, I believe that the Celtics win this game five, of course. Uh, if you haven't seen, go look at it now, my game five preview on the uh, yep. the blog website. Uh, yep. Specifically, I mentioned the idea is that, you know, on the road, eight and three, road Warriors, Boston Celtics go into San Francisco. And again, haven't lost two games in a row in his entire postseason. And from the looks of things, Whoever has been winning the boards on the glass has won the game, which is a crazy stat. Again, you know, Andrew Wiggins got 16 rebounds and nobody even talked about it in game four. So in reality, Robert Williams is back on availability again. However, Jason Tatum, his shots out of the perimeter and mid-range has been a little bit 50-50 right now. I saw him be more aggressive in game four. He's uh, elevating that part of his game as well. So. Jason Tatum is going to attack the basket. It's going to be real weak. Draymond Green might not even get a stat line tonight. So I'm expecting the Celtics to win a close one, but it's going to be based in the paint. It's going to be based down low. Danka? I, I got the Warriors winning. I'm going to say the first, I'm going to say the team, I'm going to say the Warriors win, but the team that wins today will be because of offensive rebounds. That's what I'm gonna say. Offensive rebounds, because both whoever wins or if, even if it's a tie, if it's not offensive rebounds, it's the three point shooting. Whoever can make the most will win the game. Period. And if the Boston Celtics can lock up Steph or can hold him to something, it's game over. Four is hey, hey, again, we don't have to lock up Steph. We just have to lock up everybody else and get the offense rolling. Like literally, Game Four itself was a perfect example. You know, the last seven minutes of the game. We only made six points. Yeah, I saw, I saw that stat. You just didn't make a thing. You're so much just fun. like, what the heck is that? I mean, I'll work for over for three. <laughs> Morgan's get the rebound, and it's like, I mean, come on. But, you know, you know, believe in Boston. You know, believe in Boston. So, right, well, you ready? Also, I want to leave a, a note for anybody that we didn't really say it in the beginning. But congratulations to the Tampa Bay Lightning for making the, the Stanley Cup Finals. We're not even going to get into that. We're yeah. not even going to get into that. <laughs> We're not even into that. Go no Abs. I'll leave it at that. Go Abs. Right Here we go. Are you guys ready? You guys ready? Yep. Now, I told you, Brandon, that I felt good about Boston because Boston this postseason hasn't lost back-to-back -back games. They haven't. It's true. This is fact. But the way I can see this series playing out is the Warriors win tonight. They go up 3-2. Boston will lose back-to-back -back for the first time. They go back to TD Garden. Boston wins and ties this up 3-3, and it'll be a game seven back in San Francisco. And for that reason, Golden State. Golden State tonight. With the KD shirt, the audacity. Game five tonight. I'll say right now also that if Draymond Green doesn't play atrocious, if he does not play atrocious, it's a blowout win. Blowout win. Well, good thing that's not going to happen. <laughs> well, because he's played terrible, bro. No, because I saw a, a, a bet, right? That uh, I don't know if it was DraftKings that posted. Somebody posted it. But they won like there was a bet. Grand. What was that? That they won like 260 grand on like the craziest odds? No, not even the craziest odds. It's the fact that there's odds right now. That are not in favor, however, there are odds of Dream of Green not even getting a single stat tonight. <laughs> Just fouls. That Just sounds fouls. like something the A, hey, that sounds like something Drake would bet on. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And he'll win it too, for some reason. But what I'm saying is is like his game has gone so bad against the Celtics, it's like the only thing you do is get under their skin, you know? So if it were, if it were me, I would start uh Kaminga over Draymond because of the offensive liability and the fouls also. So I would just make him call, come off the bench, to be honest. Uh, I mean, it's possible. I mean, they did put out uh, Porter Jr. for the yeah, game too. Yeah, that, that, too, that worked out well. He could shoot. Yeah. Draymond but, can't shoot. No, yeah. Every but, single yeah. year, he's declined. I don't know what's going on. 
I mean, it's just like going over. Bro. Not even he's layup. Nothing's going in. No, oh, yeah. I mean, in reality, I mean, he wasn't known as the best shooter on the team. But at the no, same it's time, not. it's like, I mean, hell, I mean, we're expecting guys to play into their 40s. You know what I mean? I mean, Draymond's not that type of player. So, yeah. straight up, probably the last couple of good years of Draymond Green. However, gotta love the intensity he brings to the game. And plus, you know, this finals, probably one of the best finals in the past couple of years. So, gotta say it right now. It, it's been pretty intense. It's been pretty intense. Well, guys... This was fun. This was productive. Now it's time to get, well, we don't have to get serious anymore because we don't have a dog in the fight, but for Brandon, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We'll be back next week. And yes, Marlins are tied with the Phillies. And we hope that you enjoy game five of the NBA Finals tonight, live from Chase Center, nine o'clock p.m. Eastern, Boston Celtics, Golden State Warriors. We'll see you guys next week for a brand new episode. Go Seas!